Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. And now it's time to join that busy businessman, that solid citizen and that unctuous uncle, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, who's arrived home from the office an hour earlier than usual today because of a splitting headache. <laughs> Going home at this hour. Oh, good afternoon, Marjorie. I closed the office early on account of a splitting headache. Oh, that's too bad. How are you feeling? Just wonderful. Well, what about the headache? Oh, she went home. <laughs> she? Yes, I didn't have the headache. It was my secretary, Miss Rep Vogel. I kept telling the girl, uh, poor girl, to get glasses, but she thinks they'll spoil her good looks. Oh, if that girl ever wore glasses, she could see that she hasn't any good looks. <laughs> that's probably why she doesn't wear them. Anyhow, after she left, I guess I got a touch of spring fever. Oh, you did? Yes, you know. In the spring, a young man's fancy uh, lightly turns uh, to thoughts. Uh, <laughs> that's from Loxley's Hall, Tennyson. Hey, Marge! Gee whiz, you can't imagine what wandered into our backyard just now. Hi, Uncle Morris. There's a goat in our backyard. Is a goat? Sure, a real live billy goat with all the accessories. A beard at one end and a tail at the other. If... And two horns. Uh, well, and a very good bumper, too, I'll bet. <laughs> What's it doing in our yard? Well, it pulled up some of those onions you planted, and right now it's having dinner. <gasps> onions? I never planted... Oh, good heavens, those are my crocus bulbs. Yes, crocus. Oh, why didn't you stop him? Hey? Uncle Mort, please come along and help. Yes, certainly, my dear. Come along, Leroy. Oh, gee, crocus, do you think it'll croak the goat? Yes. <laughs> Leroy, I can see you don't know very much about a goat's suggestion. <laughs> oh, now you get right out of my flower garden, you old devil. <laughs> Uncle Mort... Make him stop eating my flowers. Now tell him to quit. Yes, all right, my dear. No, I'll see here. Uh, uh, what's the goat's name, Leroy? I don't know. We just can't call him anonymous. Oh, I know. Let's call him Horace after Judge Horace Hooker. Eh? <laughs> There's quite a resemblance between those two old goats anyway. <laughs> oh, Uncle Mort, you don't really mean that. No, Leroy. The goat's more intelligent looking. <laughs> oh, hurry, Uncle Mort. Well, you've been talking that goat's eaten four crocuses, all the nasturtiums. And now he started on my lilies. Lilies? He has, has he? <laughs> you get away from those lilies, Horace. Quickly now, before you wind up holding one of them. <laughs> Looks like Horace has been eating the radishes, too. <laughs> hey, come on, Leroy. Help me drag him out of there. Well, maybe I can handle him myself, Uncle Moore. Huh? Come on out of there, Horace, old boy. Uh, nice little goat. Come on, palsy walsy And a boy, that's right. You see, all you have to do is treat him with kindness. Oh, look, Uncle Mort, he likes you. Well, isn't that cute? Look at that, Uncle Mort, he's chewing your sleeve. Yeah, he is. And stop that, Horace, let go. Unhand me, sir. <laughs> yes, Horace, don't chew Uncle's sleeve. You might choke on the buttons. <laughs> Be nice to your Uncle Mort. I'm not that goat's Uncle Mort. Now, Leroy, you take this silly Billy back to its owner. Gee, yeah. Uncle. I don't know who he belongs to. Nobody around here keeps goats. He must have wandered in from out of town. Well, he can wander right back out again. You hear that goat? Beat it. Skidoo. Eh, vamoose. That's Spanish for scram, Leroy. Eh, vai para casa. What's that? That's Portuguese for vamoose. <laughs> ah, jeepers, um, couldn't we keep him for just a little while? Leroy, we're not running a bite wee for belligerent billy goats. <laughs> but he'd make a keen pet. Young man, your pets have been my peeve. We've let you keep rabbits, turtles, and frogs, and chipmunks. But goats are more than I can stomach. And goodness knows I can stomach a lot. <laughs> oh, I agree, Uncle Mort. Now, how can we get rid of him? I'll uh, call the city hall. City hall? Yes, there must be some department down there that handles runaway goats. But, gee, Uncle, why can't we just keep him? I'll tell you why, my boy. In the first place, he doesn't belong to us. In the second place, whoever owns him might want him back. In the third place, I won't have him tearing up our place in the first place. <laughs> Quiet, you. Hello. 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 Now, 
Uncle Mort, don't lose your temper. Why shouldn't I lose my temper? I've been on this telephone until I've gotten a cauliflower ear. <laughs> well, maybe no one that's down at City Hall wants a goat. There must be some department that handles them down there, Leroy. By George, what are we paying taxes for? <laughs> Operator, wake up. Good afternoon, City Hall. Oh, good afternoon, my dear. <laughs> Did you have a nice nap? <laughs> what do you want, please? This is still Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, the goat man. Goat man. <laughs> one moment, please. Uh, one moment, please. I'd like to see Hitler hold his breath for one of her moments. <laughs> Leroy, did you tie that goat to the tree like I told you to? Yes, I did, Uncle, and he chewed through the rope. Oh, dear, what's he doing now? Oh, nothing, just standing there eating the rest of the rope. <laughs> well, let's give him enough rope and maybe he'll operate her. Who are you waiting for, please? I want somebody to come and get my goat. Well, just hold on. Here you are. Oh, at last. Mr. Entwistle, I'm calling about a goat. Sorry, that's not my line. I don't handle sick goats. It, but this goat isn't sick. Oh, then you want Percy Bodkin. Just a second. <laughs> hello, Bodkin speaking. Uh, hello, Mr. Bodkin. We've got a goat down at our house. Yeah, I know. It hasn't any nose. How does it smell? Terrible. I've heard that one. <laughs> No, no, no. This is a perfectly healthy goat. Are uh, you sure? Has it had a physical lately? <laughs> uh, look, it's straight into our yard. We want you to come and take it away. But I'm just the inspector of goat's milk. <laughs> this isn't an Annie goat. It's a Bill. Oh, Bill, he's out to lunch now. I'll have him call you when he gets back. <laughs> operator, operator. One moment, sir. I'm trying to help you. Here's uh, Mr. McCorkle in Lost and Found. Go ahead, Mac. Hello. I understand you lost a coat. What kind? Overcoat, top coat, sport coat, or mackinac? No, no, not a coat. Uh, a goat. Oh, a goat? Yeah. Here in the city hall? No, here at home. How could you lose a goat at home? You probably just mislaid it. Yes, miss. <laughs> I didn't mislaid it. I found it. Well, then if you found it, why are you bothering me? Because it isn't mine. But does the coat fit you? Yeah, it's not a coat. It's a goat. A G-O-T, goat. <laughs> oh, now I understand. I've switched you over to the park commission. They use them on the lake. Use what on the lake? Boats. Oh! <laughs> no, no. Operator, operator. Yes. Hello. City planning commission. I don't want the planning commission. I just want to find out how to get rid of a goat. Oh, yes. The phone girl told me. Well, all you have to do is come down here and sign a complaint. I'll be glad to. Then what happens? We'll send a policeman out and he'll arrest that man. He can't keep a goat in a residential zone. No. <laughs> All right, Leroy, time for you to trot off to bed. Oh, but gee, it's early, huh? Can't I read to the end of the chapter? No, young man. Before you go to your room, I want you to go outside and chase that miserable goat out of our yard. You mean tonight? Right now. And lock the gate so he can't get back in again. Okay, but it's a pretty tough break for the old fellow. No place to turn to late at night. I thought you just said it was early. Sure for me, but not for a goat. Yeah. It's pretty sad. Now, now, let's not get sentimental about a billy goat. Yeah, but how would you feel if it was a cold night and you were all alone in a strange city and you were a goat? Well, I'd feel... How do I know I'm not a goat? <laughs> well, Uncle Mort, just supposing you were, Horace. Uh, uh, Leroy, sit down. We're going to have a little man-to-man -man talk. Gee, like Andy Hardy? Just sit down, young man. Oh, I don't want to appear hard-hearted. But we've got to look at this entire goat problem from the practical standpoint. Understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, first of all, am I this goat's keeper? Did I invite him to come here and live with us? No, but you never told him he couldn't come either, Unc. What's that got to do? Let's be calm about this, Leroy. <laughs> the trouble with you, young man, is that you're too impulsive. I am? Yes. You should carefully consider what you're jumping into and then don't jump. Why, what business would we have owning a goat? Oh, it's well business. We could rent him out to the neighbors as a lawnmower. Yes, a lawnmower. <laughs> That's not the point, Leroy. Let's get down to cold, bare facts. Sure. Poor old Horace is cold and bare, and that's a fact. <laughs> and homeless and lonesome, too. But you've got to realize, my boy, that that isn't our fault. Oh, I do, Unc. And I realize it wouldn't be our fault either if we threw him out and it started to rain and he caught cold and wound up with double pneumonia. Yes, double pneumonia. Oh, yes, that's perfectly true. If you think it's going to rain. What do we care if it does? I never heard of a goat catching double pneumonia before. Well, suppose he doesn't. Then he may starve to death or get run over by a truck. Oh, I'd hate to think that... Leroy, maybe I've been too impulsive. Oh, no, Uncle. 
Well, I guess I better go out and chase Horace out of our backyard. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you needn't bother, my boy. I'll uh, take care of those things myself. But you said that I was supposed uh, to... Never mind, Leroy. It might rain, and if that poor old goat hasn't got anywhere else to go, it won't hurt us if he spends the night under our mulberry bush. Gee, for something, we're going to keep him? Uh, there you go, acting impulsive again. But he hasn't given us any trouble since he had his dinner. Yeah, do you remember what he had for dinner? A delicious <laughs> set of Grandma Gildersleeve's lace curtains. <laughs> it again. I'll watch him, Uncle. How about it? Well, we'll see, Leroy. I'm going to see that you get straight to bed. Come on. Oh, I'm going. You don't need to come with me, Uncle. Yeah, I'm going to my room anyway. There's an old blanket in my closet I'm going to take outside for that goat in case it gets cold tonight or if he gets hungry. <laughs> oh, I don't think you need to bother, Uncle. He, he'll, he'll be just fine without that. Well, seeing that I'm the host, of course, I might as well... If, uh... Leroy, what's going on in your room? Oh, n- n- nothing, Uncle. Oh, nothing, eh? Well, let's take a look. <laughs> Leroy, look at your mattress. That's the last straw. <laughs> Do you think that was the last straw, Judge Hooker? No. I put that horse... Horace. Uh, uh, I mean that goat. <laughs> I put him outside after that, and he spent the night bleeding his brains out. Well, what have you done about it today? Well, I placed an ad in the lost and found section of the newspaper. I oh, expect hello, it. Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Judge Hooker. Did you hear the latest news about the Gildersleeve goat? Oh, of course you haven't. You haven't been home, I mean. Yeah. Well, we haven't had so much excitement in the neighborhood since that donut truck ran over that coffee salesman. Yes. <laughs> My goodness, Dottie. What's happened now? Well, your goat has developed the worst habit. He's playing games with everybody. What sort of games? Well, there's one called Button, Button. Who's going to get the button? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yes, it usually starts with somebody playing drop the handkerchief, and then the goat plays hop, skip, and bump, and then bingo, you're it. Yes, well, great jumping jeeps. Come on, Judge, let's go. Uh, thank you for telling us, Dottie. Well, that's all right. Well, the neighbors say they're going to sue you for damages, but for the life of me, I can't see why they want more damages. <laughs> Shake a leg, Judge, before that goat busts me into bankruptcy. Ooh, by George, there he is now. Hey, he's a cute-looking fella. Yes, now, there are people who think you're cute-looking, too, Judge, and for the very same reason. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, any similarity between you and that goat is purely coincidental, but there's still definitely a similarity. <laughs> uh, Bertie! Afternoon, Mr. Gill, please. Afternoon to you, too, Judge. Bertie. I don't suppose the owner of that goat showed up. No, sir, he didn't. He's a powerful, smart man, that man is. However, there was another man around here looking for to buy that goat. Well, why didn't you sell it to him? Well, now, suppose I did, and the owner showed up. That's how people get themselves into pokey. In... <laughs> but we have a legal right to sell this animal now, haven't we, Judge? That's right. The decision was handed down in State of Nebraska versus two unclaimed guinea pigs, later amended to Nebraska versus unspecified number of guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, Judge. Now, Bertie... Do you remember the name of the man who wanted to buy that goat? No, sir, I don't. Oh, what a pity. But he left his card. Here it is. Oh, his card. Good. Let's have it. Thanks. You? I'll pick it up. And never mind, Bertie. I'll get it. Look out, Gildy. Get up. Here comes that goat. What'd you say, Judge? No, Mr. Gildy, please. What's all the commotion? <laughs> Here, let me help you up. You aren't hurt, are you, Gildy? No, no. Of course not, Judge. I'm just practicing forced landings. That's all. <laughs> Where is that goat? You better get rid of him, Mr. Gilsey. That's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell him right now. Where's that man's card I dropped? Well, it was on the grass a minute ago. Yes, it was right over. Oh, somebody stop that goat. Oh, it's too late. He just chewed up the card with the customer's name. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gilded Slave again in just a moment. But first, I want to spread the good news. All you busy homemakers will be tickled pink to know that there is a way to make delicious macaroni and cheese fast. In fact, you can make fluffy, light macaroni drenched in cheese goodness in just seven minutes cooking time. The product called Kraft Dinner holds the secret of this speed. In every Kraft Dinner package, there's a quick cooking macaroni that needs no baking at all. Also, some Kraft grated that in a twinkling gives you grand cheese flavor through and through. Just seven minutes at the stove, and you have a marvelous main dish. Fluffy, tender macaroni, drenched in cheese goodness. The family will say Kraft Dinner is just about the best macaroni and cheese you ever made. And you'll say Kraft Dinner is a positive treasure. On days when you have to work fast to get luncheon on time. Or for dinners, 
when you've spent the afternoon shopping or working late on your defense job. So stock the emergency shelf tomorrow with several packages of Kraft Dinner. And now let's return to the great Gildersleeve, who's putting the finishing touches on a temporary goat pen to hold Horace until he can be sold, given away, or just tied to some fence and ran from. Yeah. There we are, Leroy. And there you are, Mr. Goat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I'm tired. I'm going to take a nap in the hammock, Leroy. Okay, you take it easy. I'm going over to Piggy Bank's house and see if his mother will let him take Horace. All right. Only don't wake me up unless she's foolish enough to say yes. <laughs> Gee, poor Uncle Mort. He's getting to the age where he can't take these things. Oh, my gosh, James. Oh, there you are, Leroy. We've been looking for you, haven't we, girl? That's yes. right. We've just come from our first aid lesson, and we need a victim quick to practice on before we forget everything we learned just now. So come on, little man. Let us bandage you up. Nothing doing, Sally. The last time you guys wrapped up my leg, my foot was asleep all afternoon. <laughs> Besides, i got to see a lady about a goat. Well, it looks like we'll have to practice on each other. Oh, no. Let, let's see if Bertie's here. Right. Oh, Bertie, would you like to come out here and be a victim? A victim of what, Miss Marge? Circumstances? <laughs> no. <laughs> of a broken leg, brains, burns, everything. No, ma'am. I have absolutely no inclinations in that direction. <laughs> we just want to practice first aid on you. We're just going to pretend that you're hurt. Can't you do it just pretending I'm there, too? I've got a pressing engagement to press that dress she wants to wear tonight. But if you want me to leave that to go no, on... No, 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 Bertie, no. We'll, we'll find someone else. Oh, say, Marge, isn't that your uncle over there in the hammock? Yes. Oh. <laughs> He'd make an awfully jolly patient, wouldn't he? Well, I don't know. You think we've got enough bandages to go around him? <laughs> <laughs> let's go over and ask him, huh? Come on, Gilbert. All right, well, let's be quiet. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Gillisley, do you mind if we use you as a dummy to practice our first aid on in the kind of nobody else will, and you don't have to disturb yourself in the least because we can go right ahead just the way you are. <laughs> the shoe flies go away. <laughs> He's asleep. We shouldn't disturb him, Dottie. If Uncle Mort's asleep, I don't think even Dottie can disturb him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you mean it's all right to proceed? Sure. Just as long as we don't treat him too roughly or push him out of the hammock. Oh, goody. I've just been waiting for a chance like this to practice my tourniquet. Now, just hold still, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, this would be a good time to work on chest bandages. No, I'm afraid we'd have to get him up for that. Well, couldn't I just roll the bandage around him and the hammock? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, that would seem logical. Well, what are you going to do, Margie? Oh, I think I'll work on that treatment for burns and rub some of this salve on Uncle's face. <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably keep him from getting sunburnt, too. Mm. Ooh, this salve is certainly strong. <laughs> My, your uncle is certainly a sound sleeper. Yes, just listen to that sound. <laughs> I never thought it would take so many matte bandages to go around your uncle's circumference, Marjorie. <laughs> yes, that takes in a lot of territory, doesn't it? Gosh, but this stuff is sticky. Anyone have an extra handkerchief? Mm hmm. Just a second and I'll be through. Then. Oh! Dolly Dobson, what are you doing to my uncle? Oh, I'm just tightening this tourniquet. But good heavens, Dolly, you never use a tourniquet on the neck. <laughs> Where? That's twisted. Oh, I Are you all right? <laughs> And maybe we better help him sit up. Oh, he can't sit up. He's bandaged to the hammer. In that case, we better... Oh, oh. oh, my goodness, what's that? It's our goat. He wants out. Oh, he got out, too. Oh, here he's headed this way. What do we do? Oh, quick, girls, into the house. Oh, hurry, Marjorie. Dude, I can't leave Uncle Mort like this. Oh, here he comes. Goodbye, Uncle Mort. <laughs> 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 I can't get up. Who tied me down here? <laughs> well, why'd you do it? <laughs> oh, it's you. It, what do you want? <laughs> you get away from me. Oh, your nose is cold. <laughs> yep, hey, quit licking my face. <laughs> <laughs> Horace, your beard tickles. <laughs> Uh, Mr. 
Mr. Gilsey, don't you think you'd better figure out some way to get rid of that goat? Because the animosity against him on the outside is beginning to penetrate on the inside. Uh, what do you mean, Bertie? Well, I happen to know a certain very reliable and capable cook who has been offered a most lucrative position in a completely goatless household. Or <laughs> uh, should I be more specific? Yes. No, no, no. I think I understand, Bertie. And I'm trying to get rid of Horace, too. Well, I sure hope she does. And instantaneously, too. I'm tired of flying a kite from the second floor every time I got clothes to dry and wearing a skillet whenever I have to bustle out into the yard. <laughs> and you folks ain't had it so easy either, eating them buffet dinners every night standing up. <laughs> well, let's not go into that, Bertie. It's a painful subject. Oh, excuse me, Uncle Lord. I didn't know you were here. Come here, young man. Who, me, Uncle? Of course you. Leroy. Did you have anything to do with Horace chasing the postman down the street and then eating our morning mail? Well, only indirectly, Uncle Mort. Yeah? You see, I was trying to train him to fetch the mail inside every morning the way Piggy Banks' dog does. It, well, he fetched it inside, all right. <laughs> Maybe we ought to buy him a muzzle. Uh, what's the use? He'd eat that, too. <laughs> what we should do is saw off his horns, trim off his beard, and then tip off the dog catcher. <laughs> can't do that, Uncle Mort. He likes you. Yes. Every time he sees you, a look steals into his great, big, beautiful blue eyes. Too bad I couldn't see that look when I was bending over to find the keyhole last night. <laughs> he knocked me clear into the sitting room. <laughs> yeah, now what? As if I didn't know. Mr. Gillsleeve? Yes, that's me. I'm from the city hall. Do you keep a goat on these premises in violation of the city zoning code? Of course you do. I can see him from here. Do you have county <laughs> license to conduct a goat dairy as provided for in the civil statutes of this state? I thought not. Has a force goat proven a nuisance to serve her to the peace and menace to life, limb, and real estate values? I thought as much. Better get rid of him at once, Gildersleeve. That goat is butting into everybody's business these days. <laughs> All right, that's enough of me. Get your cap, Leroy, and come along. Okay. Where are we going, Uncle? You heard the man. We're going to take that backyard battering ram out to the country and get rid of him. Hey, here, Horace. Come on, nice little goat. Yes, you You lead him around to the car, Leroy. All right. Careful, Uncle. You'll trip your shoelaces untied. Shoelaces untied? Oh, thank you. I've got to fix it now. Oh, look out, Uncle. Here comes Horace. I don't see him. Where is he? Right beside you. No, no, Horace. <laughs> I fooled him that time. How, oh, uh? I'm wearing my Air Raid Warden helmet where it'll do the most good. <laughs> Slow down, Uncle Mort. Let's try that farmer up ahead. That farmer? Oh, yes. But this is our eighth stop, Leroy. I never thought there were so many goat haters in this part of the country. Uh, hello there, neighbor. Well, hello there. Oh, uh, how would you like to buy a dandy goat at a cheap price? <laughs> no, no, thank you, gentlemen. Gee, why not? This goats is too stubborn. They're used like yak assassins. <laughs> <laughs> but, but just look at this animal. He's a genuine Jim. A genuine Jim? <laughs> he looked more like a York by Indian. <laughs> you can have him for only two dollars. <laughs> no, no, too high. All right, I'm tired of hauling him around the countryside. You can have him for nothing. That's still too high. <laughs> <laughs> well, then suppose I give you uh, three or four dollars. How about that? Oh, no, you're yoshing me. I'm not yoshing you. I'm uh, joshing you. <laughs> well, what do you say? No. But why not? That goat is worth ten dollars for sure. If you ask less, something then wrong, sure. You get along now. Get off my property. I don't want no dealings with hot goats. Well, for the hot goats. Uh oh, Horace, what have you done? Gee, Uncle, look at the upholstery in the back seat. The upholstery? Oh, where is it? I got the latest. <laughs> All right, brother, this is the end of the line. What you gonna do, Uncle? Open that back door, Leroy. Uh, now, get out, Horace. <laughs> yeah, shut the door quickly, Leroy. All right. Yeah. G goodbye, Horace. Yeah, goodbye, Horace. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get home, Leroy. <laughs> yes, it's... Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness, look, we're out of gas, Leroy. Horace, get away from those tires. <laughs> It's, 
It's 7 o'clock, Miss Marge. You still want to wait dinner for Mr. Gillsleeve and Leroy? Oh, yes, Bertie. Just a little while longer, anyhow. Oh, I do hope they come back without that goat. Yes, ma'am, and so does everybody else who's ever come in contact with him. <laughs> Go to give the devil his dues. That horse had the most personality I ever saw in a goat. Too bad it was all negative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what we'll do if they bring him back again. Do you think we could hide him someplace where the neighbors wouldn't find out? No, ma'am. They'd sure get the wind of it somehow. <laughs> I guess you're right. Well, here we are. Oh. Is uh, dinner ready, Bertie? Yes, sir. How about that horse, Goat? Oh, we found out who owned him and gave him back. You did? Who does he belong to? The uh, Summerfield Railroad Yard. The Railroad Yard? Well, I've heard of donkey engines and cow catchers, but what do goats do on the railroad? Well, that horse works down at the stockyards. He leads the sheep out of the pens and into the boxcars. Yeah, and when he ran away, they thought he'd been shipped somewhere by mistake. Yes, they were terribly glad to get him back again because it's practically impossible to move the sheep unless he leads them. Oh, well, thank goodness that's all over. You said it. Well, now, if you folks get all cleaned up, I'll put dinner on right away. Oh, dinner, and have I got an appetite. Yeah, me too. Come on, Uncle Morton. Yeah, sure. You don't know what a load this is off my shoulders. Why, I feel like if... Uh, I feel like something's wrong. What's that noise outside? Oh, I can't imagine. It sounds like... You better go to the door, Uncle. Yes, I'll soon find out. <laughs> oh, great jumping sheep. Horace has come back again, and he's brought all his little sheep friends with him. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, I'd like to mention that macaroni and cheese is one of America's favorite dishes. And now Kraft makes it possible for you to prepare this favorite dish in only seven minutes. You do it with a product called Kraft Dinner. For Kraft Dinner gives you a special quick-cooking macaroni that gets fluffy tender in boiling water in a hurry. No need to blanch and bake this macaroni. Also in the Kraft Dinner package is some Kraft Grated that puts grand cheese flavor into the macaroni quick. You spend just seven minutes at the stove to get tender macaroni drenched in cheese goodness. It's a kitchen miracle that will thrill you and delight the whole family. Kraft Dinner is a main dish all by itself, four good servings in every box. If you serve it molded into a ring and filled with cream seafood, you have a real party dish in a jiffy. So don't bother with blanching and baking macaroni anymore. Don't fuss with grating cheese and making a cream sauce. Give them grand macaroni and cheese cooked in seven minutes. Stock up on Kraft Dinner tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, in this war that we're fighting... There are a million stirring stories of valor and endurance and personal sacrifice. At this very moment, on every ocean, men of our Navy are writing an heroic page in our history. And in order that they may fight with untroubled hearts, secure in the knowledge that their loved ones at home are not in distress, the Navy Relief Society is asking us to contribute a fund of $5 million. That's right, Marjorie. For 40 years, the men of our Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard have provided immediate direct relief for their dependents themselves. But now, since Pearl Harbor, the need has become much greater. And so all of us are going to have the privilege of helping. Give now, and give generously. Either to your local Navy Relief Drive, or to the Navy Relief Society, 730 Fifth Avenue, New York City. That's right, 730 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Thank you, and good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>